My name is Terrence Winnishini. This is Count Cavalry Number 2. This is my second part video to acting. No, it is not sponsored. Spend it. It's not sponsored by Doritos, but I'm damn sure gonna eat some Doritos. And if Doritos, if you're watching, and you'd like to give me a job, I'm more than willing to take it. Or if I may quote Danny DeVito from the Renaissance Man movie, if you give me a check, I'm willing to cash it. Let me talk to you guys really fast about acting. You know, like I said in many of my other videos about acting, this does take everything you got. And most of it really takes on the role of um, finding out how to be discovered. All right? That's the main trick to acting. You might not be able to act your way out of a wet paper bag. But all it takes is one. One good person to like you and give you a fair shot and a chance. And from there, the sky is most likely the limit. Unless you like totally suck. And the actors around you can't make you look any better. I mean, they can, can't make you look any worse either, then you should probably look for a new line of work. Also, there are lots of ways to commit career suicide. So, you have to be careful at some of the things that you put out. Nowadays, I don't really think career suicide is really a thing because, um, you know, when Sinead O'Connor did her thing, I think that was mostly like a religious cry for help, and that's kind of what ended her stuff. But, you know, there have been actors who have been tweeting the hell out of Donald Trump and other people. So, it's kind of hard to say if career suicide still exists. I'm not going to say that it doesn't exist. But, you know, when it comes to making movies, and when it comes to making TV shows, and when it comes to acting in general, I'm not saying you have to be Shakespearean. It doesn't hurt to have some Shakespearean knowledge. You know, it doesn't hurt to have some knowledge of acting in general. It doesn't hurt to have knowledge of when to say your lines. That's really my only problem is that I don't remember shit very well. So remembering to say my lines, it's going to be one hell of a glitch. Whereas, you know, when I'm doing my in in independent films, everything is improv. So we kind of pull a Larry David and we're off and running. We got a storyline, we go with it. And so if it doesn't seem to suit your... Um, ability to like what I do. The problem is that some things don't transfer from paper as well as they transfer on the paper to where the actual actual actor has to say it. Because sometimes if you say something like um like the dub Chinese films, you you Ting Tao Ping? Yes, I am Ting Tao Ping. Well it's a damn shame I've come all the way here to kill you. We could have been friends. I'm not the one that's going to die. You're going to die. This is how I make my friends. I let them get real close to me. And then I cut their fucking throats. Okay? So, writing that down and it transferring between two guys carrying on a conversation about how their friendship's coming to a very bloody end is a whole different ball game when you try to transfer it from paper to the actor. Because you have to make someone actually feel what you're saying. Right? And if a person is sitting in a theater and they don't really feel what the actor's saying, it becomes a problem. Now, if you're a theater actor, you know you have to be on point. You can't quote a Midsummer's Night's Dream, what fool would these morals be, and fuck that up. All right? uh, the person who has some of the best lines is Puck. And if you have to be that theater actor for that, I highly recommend it. If you really want to do this thing, did you go for Puck? However, there are other important roles. Overon is the lead, and I would never want to be the lead in A Midsummer Night's Dream unless it's actually in the film version, because anytime I fuck up, there's this thing called editing, and editing will make me look good. Now, when I film, I film with at least two cameras. Uh, I have one handheld and one on a tripod. We try to make sure that they don't cross-fit each other. But, you know, um, we try to get as many angles as possible because it might not be that you fucked up the line. The angle might not be right. And if, the, if you get four shots in four different angles, you don't have to keep filming the same shit over it. It allows you to move on faster in independent films. Now, as for studio cameras and films like that, they got all damn day. They have a studio backing them. The actors 
are going to be there because they're contractedly obligated. Now, in independent films, you're also contractedly obligated, which is why I make people sign waivers so that even if they walk off, whatever I filmed, it's mine. And I can do with what I please, and they can't go get a lawyer and say, well, we never said that you could do that. Read the contract. I, such and such, a sound mind and body, hereby allow every bit of film footage that we do belongs to James Williams Jr. And whatever production company he chooses to use is in the film. Now, I will tell you the worst thing about acting is having people in independent films who won't show up or who swears they'll show up and then quit, like, the day filming starts. Yes, if you must know, I've had actresses quit on me, like, the damn day we started production. Like, the soon, the, the damn exact day. Like, the hour is already set, and I got a call, like, three hours ahead that she wouldn't be able to do it. Okay, that's three hours too damn late. You know... If you can't do it and you've had three weeks to learn for starting on this date, you've had three weeks to catch up with me and not be afraid to say, hey, look, James, I honestly can't do it. And in that three weeks, that gives me time to recast. And if it's a martial art film, I, I need to know three to four weeks in advance so that I can get someone, preferably a female, who has some body mechanic knowledge of herself, that I can teach her martial arts really fucking fast. Now, in my dragon's breath, that didn't happen. Now, my fallen dragons, the Bowie sisters, they already knew martial arts, so that was good. I couldn't convince them to be a love interest, and that was fine, you know. The only thing that sucked about the whole movie is that I didn't have the 14 people that I needed. I needed seven bad guys and seven good guys because I wanted to have an epic fight with, like, a massive, like, wide shot of everybody fighting everybody. Kind of like the, um... Into the dragon thing, so they, we, that one guy, me, gets the big boss. And initially, me and the big boss was going to team up against the bigger boss. And that shit didn't pan out. Alright? So, a lot of my movies, I'll be the first to tell you, they are seriously epic fails. I've been at this for 17 years. I started making movies in the year of the dragon, the year 2000. Um, thank you to all the people who have helped me, by the way. I'm sorry that I have epically failed and have let you down, but opportunities only come once in a lifetime. And when I started this, there was no YouTube, all right? And now that YouTube is there and my stuff is up here, um, still nobody's watching. So, you know, any other company that wants a martial artist with a bad hip, I'm here, you know. If you want the uh, information's right there, you can hit me up here. You can hit me up on Facebook under James Williams Jr., and then I can give you my number and you can call me if it's a joke. I don't have time for that bullshit because, like I said, I've been at this for 17 fucking years. And I'm ready to work. I'm ready to do this damn thing. Yes, I would love to be a Power Ranger. Yes, I would love to have been a common writer. Yes, I will be willing to work in Japan on those shows as well. It's just a matter of who sees me and what. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I'm not going to lie, I was really ready to give this shit up. You know, 17 years of busting my ass... Uh, casting calls coming in. You're not that bad looking of a man, but you're too short for modeling. You're not what we're looking for in acting because there are no stories of people who are half black and half Native American and half white. We don't have stories like that, so we can't really... Sorry, getting hot in here. We can't really offer you any roles because unless it's a historical movie where I can either play a slave, which means I'd have to be a houseboy, or I could play a Native American. I don't want to be in a historical movie. History is just that. It's history. I understand how it works. We in America, our history is very shameful. You know, we've done bad things to Native Americans. We've done bad things to blacks. We've done bad things to white indentured servants. I'm sure you guys weren't taught about that. We've done bad things to Japanese people, to Chinese people, to everybody. America's history is basically showered in blood. Now, no one wants to forcefully, outwardly admit that. As an independent filmmaker, I can say whatever the hell I want because at, at 17 years in and no one has given me so much as a second thought, I can say what I want until I can't. You know, there's uh, a lot of shows that I would love to be on. Not happening. You know, I'm going to have to start looking for an agent because everything is just out of, out of, out of reach. 
Um, I can't afford to join SAG. I looked at the prices for that last night. As a matter of fact, I'm like, yeah, that shit's not going to happen. You know, I can't join an organization. Well, I, it's more than my damn car insurance. I can't afford to pay that, let alone join SAG for as much as they're offering. So I will never be in the Screen Actors Guild. So I need backup plans. Let's say I get a, a job on Days of Our Lives tomorrow. Fuck yeah, I'll take it. Do I have to join SAG? Probably not. But I'm going to make damn sure I lay some money to the side so that I don't wind up like Red Fox or everyone else who has ta tax problems and shit like that. And hopefully if I'm blessed, um, my military benefits will eventually kick in. So, you know, the thing with acting is that, you know, getting discovered is the hard part. The hardest part of getting into acting is, is getting discovered. Because you will have an acting coach on most things that give you jobs. Because they're like, all right, what's your first time out? We're going to get you an acting coach. We're going to teach you how to say your lines properly, when to say your lines, you know, uh, how many breaths you got to take. All right, see, that works a little bit different than when you're in the independent film circuit. Because in the independent film circuit, uh, everything is fly by night and by the seat of your pants. For me, when um, I do films, I, I tell my actors specifically, I say, look, um, Unless you're going to forget what you're going to say, two breaths, you know, not like two deep breaths, but, you know, normal breaths and you should be fine. You know, normal breaths, say what you would say if you were really in the situation and go from there. When I hit the editing room, I'll decide what works and what does not, you know, because I edit the films. I'm starring, I'm writing, I'm directing you know, I got a, a handful of things that I can do. So it's not that I can't act as much. It's just that I have films that I want to tell. And most of them involve people who are of multicultural ethnicity. Without giving every single role to The Rock, they weren't really written for him. They were more written for me. But will I give him the role? Oh, hell yeah, because he's a movie-making motherfucker. And he can bring in the bucks. But he might look at my script and say, James, your shit's garbage. And go on about his business. I wouldn't blame them because if no one's giving me a shot to show what I can do, then what's the point? Now, we have a movie studio here in Virginia. They don't seem to be in the business of making movies. And the thing I've always said, if I had the revenue, if I had the studio, you guys wouldn't even see me on YouTube. Someone else would be running my channel because I would be making movies 24 hours a day when I don't pass out to fall asleep. But the whole concept of making movies, it shouldn't matter what genre you make, you should be in the business of making movies. Now, had I can get a deal with Netflix, had I can get a deal with Amazon, if I can get a deal with anyone that's willing to fund me to remake my movies and buy out these people in these contracts, then I'm ready to go. You know, I'm more than ready to work. I just have not hit that one group of people who says, yes, where the hell have you been? So, I will say that, as fate will have it, you guys probably aren't going to discover me until my dumb ass is dead. And by the time that happens, because no one knows when they're going to die, but no one is promised tomorrow. But by the time that happens, you're all going to be like, well, damn, where the fuck was he at? Where did he come from? I've been right here in Charlottesville the whole time. I've been in front of you the whole time. I've been to 27 casting calls. I've been on the set of two movies and have made sacrifices and haven't got the roles. First movie set I was on was a movie called Toy Soldiers. They didn't give me the job. All right, it was a. I guess they had one too many people, and I was that one that they said, "Yeah, sorry, kid, you're you're not gonna do it." Now, a few years later, when they filmed uh, Major Pain, I had cut my hair off because the cast and director said, "If you cut your hair, if you go completely military ball, we will um give you the role." This is when the 90s started having, if it's not written down, then it's bullshit. This is why. So I went to the barber, got my hair cut off, explained to them, say, look, I got like five bucks. How much does it cost to get my hair cut? It's like five bucks. So they cut my hair off. I made it all the way back down to Crozet to middle school. And when I got there, I also got to argue with one of the actors. I don't know who the hell he is. I don't know if he's still alive or dead. I forgive him and I don't give a damn because he almost got his ass beat. Um, the guy looked at me and said, we're well, sorry, we filled the role already while you were off getting your hair cut. 
refill the roll. That was it. So I jumped back in my little car and went the fuck on back home. Mad as hell because I just shaved off all my hair. You understand? So now, let this be said right here and right now, haircuts are not a fucking option. Period. I'm growing my hair until I'm 50. I've got uh, six years to go. So this is not an option. I promised my father I would keep growing it until I was 50, and that's what I'm going to do. So as I close out, I'm going to say this. You know, there have been lots of casting calls that come through Charlottesville. Some people make it. I did not. I've never fat the bill. And like I said, I've said this in a couple of videos back. There is this list, and I'm just not on it. Either I'm too short or I'm not thick enough. I'm too scrawny. I'm definitely not the color that they're looking for ethnically. So I stopped going to casting calls. I stopped listening to them on the radio because there's no point of me going to sit in a place for an hour just to say, well, you're not going to get this and you're not going to do that. Now, they asked me if I could be funny. The only joke I have for that is I'm not funny. I'm just funny looking. No one thinks that's funny. There are a lot of us out here who's funny looking. Hell, I go hands down and say, yeah, I'm ugly as hell, but I don't give a damn. You know, ugly people can be famous too. But in closing, this job, this career that I long for so badly, it takes everything you have. Some of us are blessed and we're discovered. Some of us are discovered when we're dead. That seems to be the fate that I'm heading towards, unfortunately. I'm not giving up, but, you know, if you guys are watching this and I am dead, then you see what I mean. There's a lot of BS that goes on in movies. There's a lot of BS that goes on in making movies. There's a lot of BS that goes on in casting. So, and in light of the Harvey Weinstein thing, you know, it's only going to get worse from here. I'm James Wimpson. This is Kung Fu Habit number two. Be seeing you.